Hi everyone. Someone asked me if I could uh, design them a bag that would go over the handle of a um, walking frame. They wanted to make one for a friend of theirs, uh, preferably in crochet. And um, I thought, yes, I could do that, I think. And it probably would work not just for a, a, a walking frame, it would work for a pushchair handle or a wheelchair or anything with one long straight handle would be ideal. Um, I don't have a pushchair or a walking frame to demonstrate it on so I've just put it on this little piece of plastic tubing and I hope it gives you the idea. If you imagine that that's the handle of your pushchair or walking frame, the bag goes over, it's held each side with a, a button just to stop it slipping off when you get some weight in here and you can uh, pop something inside, you can put your book on that side like that and on the other side it's got pockets for smaller things, little ones, you could put your spectacle case in that one, uh, your keys or whatever you want really and it's quite versatile because you can make um, either two large pockets on each side or you can do like I've done and make quite a few smaller ones or you could just do one large one and split it into columns uh, there's lots of different ideas that you can do and I shall show you how I made it and uh, I think it should be quite useful for somebody who wants to be hands free while they say using a push chair or a walking frame or something uh, and still carry their bits and pieces with them. I've just taken it off the handle so that you can see what it looks like when it's uh, flat, when it's finished. You've got this uh, large pocket at this end a narrow piece with a couple of buttons on it and then your buttonholes here and then these pockets which I say you can make as many as you want or just do another one large pocket, it's entirely up to you and when it's folded over the handle of the uh, frame or whatever you're using you simply fasten your buttons just to stop it slipping once you've got some weight in the pockets otherwise it would just slip off the handle you could probably also use it in, say, an armchair and put it over the arm of the chair. Um, you wouldn't need the buttons then, obviously, and you would have to be careful that the weight didn't slip, it, uh, pull it off. You might need to wait one end if you were, say, going to put your TV magazine and your television controller in one side, but it's worth looking at. It might be quite useful for that as well. So I'll show you how I made it and uh, we'll go through each stage. There's no set pattern as such, you can make it as big, as small, uh, as many pockets as you like, as wide as you like. It's really versatile and I hope you enjoy doing it. I would recommend using um, a fairly thick yarn, probably a double knit or a chunky. You could probably get away with a four ply but I think any thinner and you risk the bag losing its shape and being a little bit too floppy and not carrying the weight of whatever you've got in there. I'm going to use this chunky yarn and a 4mm hook. Uh, I'm going to do it also in double crochet, which is single crochet if you're in the US, because I think that will give it a nice firm texture. Now there's no sizing, there's no number of stitches and anything, it's just really do it to whatever you want. So. I'm just going to do some chains to the rough width of the finished bag I would like, of, of the size I would like. So just do some chains and I think I shall begin about, about a foot wide or a little bit more. But as I say it depends what you want the bag to be on, whether you want it on a chair arm or a push chair, walker or whatever, then just make it to the size of whatever it is you want to put it on. So there we go, that's, that's about um, a foot long or so, 12 inches. So into the second chain from the hook, just work a double crochet as I say single crochet if you're in the US and just do one into every chain all the way along 
right back to where to the end of the chains where you started. So I shall work my way across there and then I shall come back and show you how we go around the corner and work back the other way because we're going to be working in rounds not in backwards and forward rows. So I shall do that. Well, there we go, I've worked one double crochet into every one of the chain stitches and when uh, you get to the end, into that last one just work two stitches and that just brings you around the corner because what we're going to do now, we're not going to turn around and go back the other way we're going to work into these the other side of the chain, so the little loops that are left at the bottom of each stitch there as you go along, if that, that's your row that you've just come across and on the bottom here you can see the other side of the chains I'm going to work into those so it's a little bit tricky just to come around the corner but once you get going it's fine just do one in there one in the next one one in the next one and just go all the way back along back up to the other end where you started doing one in each and then when you get to the end just do two in the very last one so again I will do those and then I will come back and show you the next part so I've come back up to that end I shall work two in that last stitch and then this here is where you started and you just went back into the second chain from the hook so into that sort of chain as you turn there just work the next stitch we're not going to join the round we're just going to carry on back down that other side so we've gone into there and then go into the next stitch and just keep on going now round and round down each side of the piece, if you can see it there. This is where you started on the first round, you did a, a stitch in each chain and we went down there, back round the other side and now we're back here and we're going to keep doing that, just doing one double crochet in every stitch, going round and round and slowly this will start to fold up and it will become a, a bag shape and you'll get uh, two sides forming upwards and this little pocket so just carry on until you get to the size really that you want your pocket to be I'm going to do a bag with a large pocket on one side and a small pocket on the other side so that you could carry say a, a book or, or a magazine on one in the larger pocket on one side and on the other side section it off to carry smaller items like your keys or your hairbrush anything really bits and bobs that you need for the children or for yourself and, uh, and it, it will just section it up so I shall carry on doing this as I say just keep now going round and round and round in one continuous loop doing uh, double crochets in every stitch there's no need to do two at the corners now, just do one in each one and it will slowly come round the corner. And as you work up you will end up with something like this. Now if you want a small pocket obviously you could have stopped here, but I'm going for a deep pocket. And you can see how you've been working round in those circles, you don't need to do side seams or the base seam because that was done when you began working on each side of the bottom chain row and you've got this nice pocket. Now the next thing to do is to begin making a, the handle part that will go up and over the bar of the push chair, pram, wheelchair, walking frame, whatever you're putting it on. So if you just lay it out like this it will take its own natural shape into a bag or pocket shape and you could if you want just pop a um, stitch marker at each end where it forms its natural um, fold and we're going to now just work on one side going from there all the way over 
to the other side so that we're just going to leave this flap and then work up there in one forward and backward row upwards so it's simply a matter of when you get to that corner like I say where it makes its natural fold we're just going to turn round and work back the other way with a double crochet in there and in the next one next one and so on working back across the row until we come back up to where the uh, the natural fold is up here and then when we get there stop turn round and go back the other way and there we go I've come across to the other side working just um, on that one side you could count them if you wanted just to be sure that you've got the same number of stitches but I think the natural fold takes it there for you anyway so I wouldn't worry too much about it so then it's simply a matter of turn it over one chain as your first uh, turning chain and then one double crochet in every one going back now it's up to you how big you make this section uh, because it depends what you're going to be putting it on if it's over a handle or whatever but I would say you probably need about at least four inches um, on each side up to the top where it falls over so if you can imagine it's it's like this coming up we're then going to have a, a section where it will fold over the bar of whatever you're putting it on so that the pocket can be open uh, as I say I think probably at least four inches on each side so I shall do about eight inches I think now um, and then begin the second pocket on the other side but again as I say it's entirely up to you so just adjust it to suit whatever suits you in particular I've now worked um, the seven or eight inches length as I say you can do any length you want there if you want a, a longer bag and we've got the pocket here and this side coming over now what I'm going to do is just add two little fasteners, one at each end. Um, this will stop the bag slipping off the handle when it's in place because if you imagine it once the other side's finished, once it's folded over there, put something heavy into this side and it will just slip off the handle from the weight. So you just need something to secure it at each end. So I'll make those now. To make them it's simply a matter of adding on about 12 chains and then turn go back the other way and uh, into the second chain from the hook work a double crochet single crochet if you're in the US and then just work back into those chains and then continue back along the row as normal just a little bit tricky to get into the yarn when you've added chains on and you can take your time with it and make a better job than me as I try to do it to the camera it gets a little bit fiddly because I don't like keeping you waiting more haste less speed as they say and then just work into the stitches as normal just going back along the other way as you were before and what I shall do on the uh, following rows is add a uh, 
a little buttonhole into that or you could use any sort of fastener you wanted really uh, if you prefer a hook and, heart, hook and eye or velcro whatever but I will add a buttonhole in case you want to do that so I shall finish this row I shall do uh, go up to this end and then I will do another 12 chain and do exactly what I did at this end and come back again so that we've got two full rows with a, an extension on each end. I've added the stitches on at this end exactly the same by uh, chaining 12 and then turning and coming back the other way and I've come back over here over those um, stitches I created and now I'm going to make the buttonhole I shall simply chain one, turn back to go the other way, just work a couple of stitches as normal and then chain two and then miss two and then just continue on as before just going back down the row and that will form your buttonhole as you come back you'll just work over those two chain on the next row and leave that. If you want to add a bigger button if it's a really big one uh, just do say three chain and miss three stitches or four chain and miss four stitches however many uh, you think you need for the size of the button but I think that will stretch to a, a two chain will stretch enough for a, a fair size button so I shall carry on, I shall go back up to the other end here over those stitches and then turn again and make another button hole exactly the same at this end and work my way all the way back down again. So I've uh, worked the button hole at that end as, a, as I did the first one and come back along here and I'm now at the point where I've got back to those two chains and it's just a matter then of working up to them and doing just one normal stitch into each of those two chains. It's a little bit tricky to get into them sometimes but you can work your way in and then carry on up to the end there and then again turn go back the other way this is quite thick yarn then go back the other way across here over the top of these and then we're going to begin working only on the same number of stitches as we had here on this um, short piece so we'll come We'll go back along there, work over that buttonhole with um, two stitches over the chains and then when we come back along here, we'll stop here in line with that and then continue working only on those stitches for a, a very short while and then we'll make the next pocket for the other side. I've done that and I've got the two little buttonhole sides and I've just done a couple of rows just to bring it up there. Now the next step is to begin the next pocket. Now just make sure that you've got the pocket you've already done towards you. So work the pocket side facing and then count the number of stitches you've got across here and chain that same number of stitches quite loosely and what you're going to do is join it over this other side into that first stitch that you've got over here so just uh, simply work oops, a stitch into there then turn round and begin working on this side that you've already worked one stitch into each and carry on down the row and we're going to come to the end and then continue back through the chain so we're going to work in continuous circles again now like we did it with the other pocket and, uh, and work up to make that little pocket on the other side so just work down here one stitch in every one when you get round here work one stitch into each chain and as I say keep going round don't join the rounds just continue onward like you did before. So I've done a couple of inches and uh, that's 
start in the pocket on this side. Now what I want to do are two small pockets on this side. I've got one really large one here and I'm going to do two smaller ones like that so you can put little bits and pieces, keys and such like on that side. Now if you did want to do another large one that's fine. All you need to do is continue on this until it's the same length as that side. Um, so what, as I say, what I'm going to do is a smaller pocket now and because it's open we need to seal the bottom edge. Now before you do that just make absolutely sure that your pocket is on the same side. Now if, you, if you've got it on the wrong side don't panic because all you've got to do is uh, turn it back round like that. So if you'd been working on it and suddenly found it's on the wrong side simply turn it back round but you must do this before you seal this bottom edge otherwise you won't be able to turn it back. Now to seal the bottom edge, all we've got to do, now you can either count if you prefer, but I just flatten it out, make sure the sides are nice and level, and just make sure I finish on that bottom corner. I've just gone a bit too far, so I'll just pull that back until the last stitch is right in that edge there, right in the corner. And now what we're just going to do is go through both stitches. So pick up your stitch there. So we'll go through here and then through the other side. Going through both layers like that if you can see it. And it's simply a matter of doing a normal double crochet, single crochet if you're in the US, through every stitch working along bringing them both together. Just double checking as you go. Split that stitch there. Yeah, just double checking as you go that it is staying together and that you are getting each stitch opposite as you come down and that should join that together along the full length. So I'll finish that and then I'll come back and show you the next part. There we go, I've joined that all along there, joining those two together and that's given us now another pocket. So I'm going to make the next pocket exactly the same way as I did this one by chaining the number of stitches across here. Do it quite loosely and then simply join it into that first stitch on that side and then turn over and work back down on that bottom edge where you've where you've just joined it doing one stitch into every stitch along the bottom there like so all the way across here and then back down with one stitch in every one of those chains. So again we're going to make another pocket exactly the same as we did this one. And this time I shall just continue until both of these pockets here match this side. So when I put it together like that with the pocket, this big pocket here, that's the first pocket, I shall just continue with this one until it comes down here to this same length and then we'll have two pockets and we'll finish it off the same way by doing both rows together to finish the bottom edge. But I'll do that and then I'll come back and show you the finished item. So I've finished that pocket now and I've uh, finished it off exactly the same as the other one by just working those two rows together. I've ended up with a smallish pocket, a little bit larger one and then I've got the big one on the other side. Now if you want, before you fasten off and weave in your yarn ends, you could just run this back through here and sew just through two layers to give individual pockets if you wanted. You could say have three across there and perhaps even sew up there and have two larger ones. Or you can just leave it as it is. It's entirely up to you. It's quite versatile um, to make whatever suits your personal preferences really. Now the, the last and final thing to do is pop a button on. Now if you just um, line up the two top pockets there and just bring that round, it'll give you the positioning where the buttonhole is 
to just sew your button on there and do that on both sides to uh, hold your, your little bag in place over the handle of whatever you're putting it on. So I hope that's helped you. I hope you have a go and if you do I'd love to hear how you get on and perhaps see a photo if you can. Uh, I shall see you on the next video and happy crocheting. Bye for now.